Hey everybody, Dave Basulto here from PremierProUser.com and also my new site, PlanetOfTheApp.com. Um, today we're going to take a look at getting up and running in Premiere Pro CS 5.5. Just a quick start guide for you. Um, let's take a look. Hopefully some of my students that I teach uh, will be able to follow along and, and uh, have this as a resource for them later on. So here I've got a folder that says 7D Football and it's uh, throughout the uh, football season at the high school I teach at. We uh, were filming the games and a couple of my students were using their 7Ds. And I'll just click on one. Here's some of the footage. Pretty stuff out there with the 7D. I love having them learn how to use that. Um, so we're going to bring that into Premiere Pro and just cut a little uh, a video for them. So let's go into uh, Premiere Pro. And I'm going to start off a new project. And if I canceled it, these are, would be the recent projects that you worked on. But we're going to, uh, and also if you didn't see that there, you can also click on Open Project. Uh, and then just open and search for wherever that project is. You're looking for Premiere Pro Project File, which is this. And you would click Open. But we're going to start a new one here. So we're going to go File, New. And then we're going to uh, rename this. So I'm just going to go into my folders here. Let me find a little room here so I know where I am. 7D Football. I'm going to do a new folder and call it Premiere. And then I'm going to choose that. And this is going to be called uh, Football uh, 7D, just so I remember what it is. And we're going to click OK. There's some other things here, uh, scratch this, where you want to keep all your, foot, uh, your footage at. Uh, we can go into that later. This is more of a get up and going kind of thing. So Football 7D. Click OK. Next, it's going to come into the new sequence area. So you've got all of these choices here. Uh, I happen to know, and as you probably know now, this is a DSLR. So we're going to do Canon or digital SLR. Uh, we shot in 10, uh, 1080p at 30 frames per second. So we're going to choose that. Um, but if you don't know what you're using, there's an easy fix for that later on, and I'll show you how. And we'll just leave sequence one. If you wanted to, you could also go into the settings here and create your own uh, uh, template, uh, sequence template, preset, I should say. Uh, you can do that as well. Uh, and we're going to go into those more in depth in later lessons. So let's click OK. And Premiere Pro will open. Now i got to import some footage. So I can go over here into File and uh, Import. But since I've been using this forever, I just go into this uh, project panel right here and I double click. And then I go into my 7D football. And because of time concerns here, I'm not going to import my whole folder, but I'm just going to pick some random things here by holding down my command key on the Mac. And hopefully there's some good ones. Let's see. Let's pick three or four. And I'll click on import. And those files will import. And there you go. The cool thing about Premiere Pro is that I don't have to do a lot of uh, workarounds to import uh, DSLR footage. It just really works with it. So that's good to do. And up here in our project panel, you can see uh, that I've got this movie loaded. It's 1920 by 1080 at 2997, and we chose 30 frames per second. But if you didn't know what uh, type of footage you had for presets, you could do a couple of quick things. You can go here, and this, this is new to CS 5.5. I can just right click and then choose new sequence, new sequence, pardon me, from clip. And if I choose that, it creates a new sequence, and here it is. It's labeled the same as that, but if I take a look at the settings here, 1920 by 1080, 2997, and let's go back to sequence one, which we created at the beginning, 1920 by 1080, 2997. So uh, if you don't know the type of footage you have, you can just click and drag it. Uh, I'm sorry, you can right click. The next one's uh, what I was going to show you next. You can right click and choose new sequence from clip, which is absolutely the easiest way to go. 
If you're on CS5, there's still a good workaround. Uh, you can click on this and drag it, a piece of your footage, into this area here, which is the new sequence icon. And before I do that, let me just show you. This has a new sequence icon uh, to choose any of these types of new things that you want to, uh, new item icon, I should say, not new sequence, but you can do a new sequence. Uh, you can choose new items such as titles, bars and tones, color mats, etc. Uh, but we're just going to click and drag it into this and let go and it creates another sequence and you can see it's the same settings as it is on the other one. So that's in CS5, but also in CS5.5, uh, but you can also go into uh, CS5.5 and just right click, like I said, new sequence from clip. It's great. So now I've got my footage in here. Um, so I'm going to go back to the sequence one because that's the one I want to work in. And just a quick overview, so this is your project panel. From the project panel, we're gonna go into the source panel. And let me just show you how. We're gonna double click on this. You can also hold it down and drag it over. And so we're gonna do that. Uh, this is our source panel where we're gonna take a look at all of our uh, footage and so we can make edits. And then from this panel, we're going to go down into this uh, timeline down here. From the timeline, we'll also see in the program monitor what it, we're doing in the timeline. So our final edit will be over here in the program monitor. Premiere Pro also has some great uh, multi-cam capabilities that I use quite often, and I'm going to do tutorials on that later on. Uh, but let's just cut some stuff here. So maybe I want to start right here before he says hike. Now I can go right here and choose mark an endpoint. I can also press the letter I for in, which is what you will do after a while. And I can scroll by a little bit and he throws the ball. He catches it and gets tackled. And then down here, I can go right here and choose mark out or I can press the letter O. So now I've got an in and an out point. I can just drag this footage down to the timeline. I can go right here and choose insert. Uh, I have some options here. If I wanted to just drag the video only or the audio only, I can do that as well. So here we have our footage. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so we have some more room to work with. So here's my first clip. And then let's go back to the other clip I have. So I clicked on this source thing and it lets me switch between uh, clips that I have already put in here. And I'm just gonna look at this. That's a timeout. So I'm actually gonna leave that from the beginning to about right here. Click out. And then I'm gonna drag this piece of footage over to the right just by clicking on it and moving it. And I'm gonna drag this one back into the source panel. But now I have this big space, so what I can do is go in the middle here, right click, choose Ripple Delete. And then I'm going to go into my effects area here in the media browser. Media browser, info, effects, and history, it's all here. So I can go back at any time into the history area. I'm going to go over all these in depth later on, this is more of a quick start. So uh, here is my effects panel, I have all my effects here, I can just go up in here and type in cross and dissolve and video transitions pops up here's cross dissolve and i can just drag that over there and now if we play the footage i see them going and we cross dissolve to them playing the game pretty simple right so you go from here bring the footage in go down here start cutting uh, and you see what your final uh, program mon in the program monitor here you'll see what is in your timeline okay and here are all your effects you have many others to choose from I, I definitely want you to take a look at all those um, so let's look at let's find one more clip uh, let's see what this one has touchdown okay so I like that so we'll just we'll go from Right here, maybe I'll do an in point and we'll go a little further to an out point. And I'm going to drag that in and see how it snapped right in there. And I'm going to go down here and choose my uh, video transitions once again, dissolve, 
and I'll cross dissolve to that. And then let's just play our little eight second clip. And that's it. Simple to edit in Premiere Pro. Uh, once we're done here and we've done all our editing, we may want to go into do some color correcting, which we can do. Uh, let me just show you my favorite and my students' favorites is uh, Magic Bullet Looks. So I can just go in here and do Looks. Here's Magic Bullet Looks. And let me just show you how this would work. We're on there. I choose Edit Look. It loads. Here's my piece of footage. And I can absolutely change it to look, make it look blockbuster, romance, zombies, indie, etc. Just punching up the colors a little bit. So I'm just going to leave that on that for a preset there and click finished. And then you can see. Brings up the color a lot. It's crazy. Um, and then this red line here tells me that this needs to be rendered to be playing back in real time unless you have a pretty powerful computer. But let me show you a quick trick as well. If you're getting red lines and your footage is playing sluggish, let me just press play. See, I've got a pretty powerful Mac Pro, so even right there it kind of stuck. I can go over here to the right hand side, click on the program sequence, make sure it's selected. You see this gold bar selected and then I can right click and choose playback resolution. So I can go from full to a quarter and even down to a sixteenth if I have the right type of footage. But if I go down to a quarter res and then come back here a little bit and press play, see now it's playing, eh, it's still a little choppy. It's a pretty big effect. But because I'm, I have a quarter resolution, it's going to play back a lot faster than it would without it. So if, you have, if you're working with red footage or anything like that, you can always go in and change your playback resolution. And we'll just turn looks off right now. So once you're done with your edit, then you need to export this so you can show the world. So you can go up here into File, Export, Media, or Command M. Now I'm skipping over a lot of steps that I teach my kids, um, such as going into Adobe Audition or Adobe Sound Booth if you're on CS5 to do audio fixes. Um, of course, color correcting, uh, adding titles, all of that. And we're going to do uh, different lessons on all that later. This is just a get up and go type of uh, uh, video tutorial for you. So uh, Command M takes us to the Media Encoder. And actually, this is the export settings. Then it takes us to the media encoder. So media encoder, uh, so here we are. And I've got a little problem here, but I'll fix that later. Um, actually, let's fix that now because it's bothering me. Uh, as you can see in my footage, I moved it when I was changing my, my uh, resolution settings. So that should be about right. Let's see. That'll be fine. Okay, so I'm going to press Command M one more time, and I'm going to choose H.264, but you have plenty of formats here. Uh, QuickTime, of course, uh, if you want to make a, a DVD or even a Blu-ray, I'm um, going to H.264, and then I'm going to put this up on YouTube, so I'm going to choose YouTube widescreen uh, HD, and then it tells me... Uh, all this information. I can also go here and choose my sequence output. So we're going to look at 7D football. I'm going to make a new folder, call that renders. And we'll call this uh, test uh, 01. And we'll press save. And now we're ready to go. I will always want to keep maximum render quality. Uh, like it says right there, it gives better quality scaling and it does take a little longer to encode, but I don't care. I want that on. Uh, if I have a lot of motion stuff, I might want to use frame blending and it's telling me my estimated file size. And then the cool thing, I can either click export and just let it go automatically or I can choose Q and I'll show you why in a second. Export's going to tie up Premiere Pro until it's done exporting. 
Q opens the Adobe Media Encoder and lets it encode in the background and I can keep working on edits while that's uh, rendering out. Uh, the other thing you need to keep in mind is your work area. And let me just move this for a second. If you see this bar right here, that is your work area. Anything within there, within that area is going to be rendered. So uh, I can change that here to the entire sequence if I'd like. So whatever, whatever's in that sequence is going to be rendered. I usually keep it on the work area. So now I'm going to press Q. It's going to open up this encoder, the Adobe Media Encoder, which I absolutely think is fantastic. And it loads it in, and there it is. I can also go in here and do custom, uh, where I can go in and change my preset if I want. Uh, on the spur of the moment, I can click here and duplicate it. And now I'm going to press this button right here to start encoding. But notice how I can just go back into Premiere and keep on editing. And choose different things, and look at this footage while this is encoding for me. Okay, so now we'll uh, flash forward in time and take a look at uh, our encode. So let's go into the Finder window and Renders. And here is Sequence 1. Double click on it. And here it is in all its glory. So as you can see, it's very simple to get up and running in Premiere Pro CS 5.5. All you need to do is import your footage in here, bring it into the source monitor, into the timeline, check out the program monitor as you're editing in the timeline, add effects, add transitions, and then export. Thanks for watching. I'm Dave Basulto, and we'll be back with some more Premiere Pro CS 5.5 tutorials. Thank you.